Welcome to the latest pack break on Wax Ecstatic. I'm your host, Matt Salmon, and we are taking a look at the final set requested by our listeners. Sets that we looked at in the past just one time, and then we just kind of moved on from them for whatever reason. And this final set is a very intriguing one because it was one of those right ideas at the wrong time. We're talking about Donruss Triple Play, which, as you can see by the wrapper, made its premiere in 1992. Now, this is a, a fat pack, as we'd call it now, 40 card jumbo pack, and it includes one gallery of stars card. That was basically the fancy name Donruss gave the Diamond Kings card. So there was a parallel version of the Diamond Kings, the Perez Steel Gallery artworks for Donruss Triple Play, and they're very nice too. Plus the Triple Play game card. Ooh, we get to see what kind of fun things we could have won back in 1992. Now, Donruss Triple Play was geared towards kids. And of course, baseball cards are always geared towards kids. But by 1992, there was a lot of concern that way too many adults, made too, way too many people with too much money were dominating the scene. Boy, <laughs> how times have changed in the last 30 years, right? But uh, this was an effort by Donruss, and Tops had a similar effort called Tops Kids, to kind of make baseball cards appear to be a little more fun. So you had your base sets, but you had these that were just completely different types of cards. So let's open up this Donruss Triple Play Jumbo Pack from 1992 and see what goodies are inside. Now, I've mentioned on the podcast before, I used to collect these a lot. And let's skip ahead to the Gallery of Stars card. So David Justice, boy, if you got this in 1992, like this alone was worth, I don't know, probably five bucks right out of the pack back in the day. Still uh, in mint condition or close to mint. Looks like the corner's a little softened up here. I mean, you could probably, um, you know, find this in the three for a dollar bin, but still a very nice card to have if you're a Braves fan or a David Justice fan. Now, uh, what about the triple play card game? Let me just pull this aside real quick here. Rub off the four bases of areas to play. Win a trip to the 1993 All-Star Game. Oh, fun. Now, I'm going to use my handy-dandy 1979 Tigers Prospects card holder here to chip this off here. Let's see. Strike out. Single. Fly out. And double. All right. So if... Uh, Two areas match, you win three packages of triple play baseball cards. Well, I didn't win that. Uh, three areas match, you win a triple play baseball cap. Wow. And if four areas match, you win the grand prize. Not exactly a, a, a wonderful prize pack there. So let's see if we can find some valuable things here in the triple play card. So I'm going to pull the top card here, Mike McFarlane. So how did this card you know, how is this different from what you saw in regular base sets in 1992? Well, you have the very kidified layout here. Bright colors here on the border. The picture is uh, somewhat uh, crooked. You've got the Donruss Triple Play logo down there, the team logo, and then, of course, the player name and position up top. So uh, nothing really jumping out on the front of the card other than the slightly skewed picture and the really bright colors. But if you turn it on the back of the card, this is where Donruss tried to change the game just a little bit. Player personal, personal information up top, you had a two-line stat breakdown the previous year and careers. And then you have this ginormous space given up for some interesting factoid. In this case, the Royals name comes from the famous American Royal Livestock and Horse Show, which is held in Kansas City every year. So educational, yes. Uh, super bright and attractive uh, for young kids to look at. Absolutely. Uh, is it loaded with information? Not really, although now we know why the Kansas City Royals are called the Royals. And you'll notice most of the time the factoid that's on the back links up with either the player or the team he plays for on the front. Now what did make Donruss Triple Play different is this was the first time you saw uh, frequent cards for unusual things. In this case, the famous chicken. Now this is not the famous chicken's first card. As we know, uh, he had some cards in the early 80s with Fleer. Uh, or was it Donruss? Oh, I forget who it was. Anyway, he had a couple of cards 
early on uh, in the 80s. So, you know, if you're a kid and, and you weren't uh, quite familiar with the famous chicken in San Diego, here you have the action shot of the chicken and a little factoid in the back. But we're here for the baseball players, right? So here's Bill Sampin of the Montreal Expos. Nice little action shot. Andy Van Slyke following through on the uh, hit there. Uh, and in fact, here's an interesting thing on the back here. Uh, player quotes. So don't ever try to be somebody you're not. The real you is the one people will like. So, you know, that was uh, instead of trivia, you have, um, oh, what shall we call him here? Uh, Deep Thoughts with Andy Van Slyke. Bobby Witt, Mr. Sean Dunstan, Hindu, Dave Henderson there with the A's. Now this would be uh, worth a, a little bit of cash back in the day. John Smoltz, very early in his career. Maddie Noakes in action, fielding the pop-up. Got Jay Bell here. Uh, this is not a very flattering shot. Can anyone tell me why? Let's look closely. Where is the ball? Oh, it's behind his glove. Uh, that's right up there with Rudy Mioli, 1975 tops, without a doubt. Uh, oh, my favorite uh, prospect bust in and yours, Eddie Zosky. Shortstop of the future for the Blue Jays. Future is still waiting to come. Now, here's another interesting thing that Triple Play had back in the day. They had the awesome action. Now, as opposed to the, um, you know, the elapsed time photos that Upper Deck had, Don Russ tried to cram three quick shots into one card here. The problem is they're very hard to see. You've got to look at it very closely here to look at this play. And uh, in this case, it's the Expos player here, uh, safe, as you can kind of see from the umpire there uh, at the plate uh, there uh, in San Diego. So a neat thing, but again, kind of hard to see. Uh, any play at home play is exciting. The series of photos shows the Expos of Ivan Calderon sliding into home with Padres pitcher Mike Maddox applying the tag. Is he safe or out? Well, if you look at the third photo, you can see the umpire calling Calderon safe. That play was awesome. Wow, it's like Bart Simpson selling these cards. <laughs> All right, let's pick it up here. Omar Vizquel uh, up next. We got the late Dutch Darren Dalton. Pudge Carlton Fisk. Look at that. Fisk with a little smile. Will Clark in the throwback New York Giants uniforms. Uh, that's a pretty sweet deal. That would have been probably the 1926 Giants. Let's see if it says anything on the back here. No, it just mentions that he was part of Mississippi State and the U.S. Olympic ball team. Bill Gullickson. We got the doctor, Dwight Gooden, looking pretty fierce there. Uh, this was a neat thing that Triple Play did back then, stadium cards. Here you've got Wrigley Field at night with uh, a few details of Wrigley Field. This was neat because you would see Tops bring in pictures of stadiums on the back of their cards in 1992, but then you would start seeing uh, stadium cards popping up in base sets. I remember Score had them in 1993. Uh, all of a sudden, there was some love for some stadiums, so I thought this was neat. Remember, 1992, this is life before the internet, so if you weren't watching WGM, this is how you knew what Wrigley Field looked like. You had to, you know, count on some baseball cards. Will Cordero, there, boy, we got a lot of Expos in this pack here. Barry Larkin, eye on the ball, that is a great action shot, right there. Might be a little late with a swing, but he's got his eye on the ball. Brian Harvey at his finest with the Angels. We got Alex Fernandez back in 1992. That would have been a big hit for you. Roger McDowell with the uh, tool belt, sandpaper, and everything talking to the umpires. We've talked about McDowell and his shenanigans. Travis Fryman here. Uh, looks like an infield warm-up toss. El Presidente, Danny Martinez. Got Kevin Tappany of the Minnesota Twins. Todd Hundley in action with the Mets. Who else we got here? Oh, John Olrude. Uh, this is also not a very flattering shot because here's Olrude sliding into uh, what looks like second base and clearly he's out if you look at the umpire's action. <laughs> Either that or he's doing the twist. Uh, let's see, here's a, a big hit still uh, to this day and a pretty good condition card here. Barry Bonds, younger and slightly skinnier. 
Greg Vaughn. Let's see, does does Vaughnie make the catch here? We've had some pretty unflattering shots. Looks like he did. So that's good. All right, it didn't go over his head. Andy Ashby. This would have been the retro Phillies uniform. This would have been a turn back the clock uniform in 1991. Phillies went to the style uniform in 92. You got Brian McRae there with the Royals. Felix Jose applying the eye black. Robin Yount working to 3,000 hits there. Crime Dog, Fred McGriff trying to hold a, a runner on first base. Jeff Johnson of the Yankees. Let's see, another action shot here. What do we got here? Luis Polonia getting thrown out. Let's see what it says here. These photos take you right where the action is. The Angels' Luis Polonia slides into second as Tony Phillips of the Tigers gets ready to tag him. It looks like he might be safe, but as you can see in the second photo, the umpire was right on top of things, although Polonia will probably argue that he wasn't. And then you've got Big Ben McDonald. To wrap it up so were these cards fun yeah okay maybe not in design but you had some interesting variety and of course the big thing back then was the insert card the david justice gallery of stars but uh you know i i didn't win my triple play hat with this but it was fun is it worth all the effort uh nowadays Maybe if you're just looking for a good memory or two. We'll discuss this more in our upcoming podcast coming this Friday, June 18th at noon Eastern. I'm Matt Salmon. Thanks again for watching another Wax Ecstatic Pack Break.